Alright, so today I'm going to show you how to create a manual zombie spawner. Uh, with this you will be able to spawn zombies independently of the director and it should ignore the director limits. Let's create a new map, or at least in this case I'll be creating a new map. You can add this directly into yours however you want. I will be uploading the finished product of this for dissection if anyone needs to see how it was done at a closer thing or to copy it in any way. I don't care if you copy this because this is a really simple concept. So I'm just going to quickly build up a little map edge around here just for uh, just, you know just because I need to or else they'll leak when I compile. Durr. How's the weather? It sucks up here in Massachusetts. I'll get right down to business here in a second. Okay, so first entity you will need to uh, spawn for this is the info underscore zombie underscore spawn. It's a point entity. It looks like this. It does nothing on its own. When you place it down, it will not do anything. The director will not spawn it. You have to make it do something. Name. This is what you name it. It's referred only by this in Hammer, so I could name this something like Zombie. Or something simple or as complicated as I want. Parent. This parents it to an object. Basically, it will follow whatever object it is parented to and will spawn zombies wherever it currently is. The zombies itself will not follow the object. In this case, I will not be parenting it. Population. I'm going to leave it as default, but you can choose the population as to whatever you want. Uh, the way you obtain population files. This thing is so stupid. The way you obtain the zombie population data is just type this into the Google search bar zombie, zombie population list should be first result and it's right down no that's left for dead one it's right here list of left for dead two population names basically any of these you would use this data right here and what each of these does so if I were to choose riverbank wedding then it would spawn any of these in this percentile so it would spawn a variant of the common male formal it has a 40 percent chance of doing that a variant of the 50% common female formal or a variant of the 10% common male dress shirt jeans. This is how likely a zombie will spawn there. So for example I will use Riverbank Police because it throws in riot zombies and I like riot zombies. So I'll throw that into the population tab. Riverbank underscore police. This allows you to say if you were to change population to say tank it would spawn a tank. If you leave this as no, then that tank will stay bought. If you put it to yes, then the tank will be offered to any players in verses that are zombies. You can also make this any other SI, such as Charger or Witch, by typing in exactly like that. But in this case, I'm leaving it as a regular zombie. Now, you need a way to activate this. There are many ways to activate these. Uh, I will let you choose whatever you want. I will use several examples. And in this case, I will use several different zombie spawners for each example. This one on the right will spawn using a trigger. So select the uh, tools trigger as your texture, uh, create brush geometry, create it right, say, here. doesn't really matter where, wherever you want. Basically for this, control T, and then set it as a uh, trigger underscore multiple or maybe it could just freak out on me. Trigger underscore multiple. Give it a name, something like zombie trigger. Something like that, doesn't matter how much. Delay before reset, this is how long until it will just, you know, reset on you. So, set that to two. So every two seconds, it'll, this trigger will reset and it can be activated again. And capped players can trigger, sure, why not? So if you go down in this, you can still trigger it. 
Ghost players can trigger, I'm going to leave that as no because that's referring to the uh, special infected. Uh, we're, we should probably create a filter for this so that the uh, special infected can't trigger at all. Filter underscore activator underscore team. Filter team number, survivor, filter mode, allow entities. Just give a name like filter underscore survivor. And there you go. Once you have the filter underscore survivor, uh, plug that into the filter name for your trigger. This way only the class matching, the class is survivor in this case, so that way only the class matching the description can activate this. Once this is all plugged in, output, add, uh, let's, let's just say on trigger, then zombie, then spawn zombie. That will spawn a zombie every time this is triggered, and this will be triggered every two seconds by in-capped or standing survivors only. Now a quick edit needs to be done though because all of these share the same name which means that this will currently spawn at all of them. So let's just give these quick names like Phil. I don't know why Phil, just Phil. And maybe um, Frank, Early, James, Junior, LeBron, Georgia, I don't know. It doesn't matter what you name these because it really doesn't matter. Now you're, you're going to need a way to figure out when this trigger begins, so let's just put something down real quick on the ground. This way, so that w you'll know that when you jump over this, you're officially in the trigger. This is just for the sake of testing, because you want to be able to know when you're actually in the trigger. Put another one to the side of it, just so that's exactly clear. We'll place that in lane there. And let's just move this whole thing over. We need we need to go fill some more room. Fill looks, fill looks just... Uh, another way you can trigger these is with a timer and a button. So create a logic timer, name it, let's say fill timer. Um, start disabled, mark this as yes, or else this timer will be running from the very moment the map starts. Let, let's use random time as well so that it's randomized between which it spawns, so it will spawn anywhere between two and six seconds so on the second second the fourth second or whatever you want up to six seconds it will activate this timer and it will fire alternatively if use random timer was set to no then it would always fire on the dot and we could set like right three and then every three seconds it will always fire the timer but in this case we want random time so that we can kind of mimic the director in this way because the director is random and i hate him sometimes on timer fill and then spawn zombie. So this will spawn fill every time the uh, random timer goes off, but this timer starts disabled, so we actually need a way to enable it. And this way will work for events, it'll work for survival, whatever you want. You can enable this timer with a button whenever you want. Button, let's use a gallery button, because this kind of looks like a shooting range, but with fill at the end of it, because we hate fill, I guess. Let's see, I'm going to make the uh, grid a little smaller so I can move this in a little more accurate of a way. So right now we have a little button down the range, it's prop dynamic, it doesn't do anything on its own, prop dynamics are there for show, you don't actually trigger one. You can name your prop dynamic whatever you want, you can name it, let, uh, I don't know, let's kill Phil. That, that, or zombie trigger, let's kill Phil. How about that? So let's kill Phil is the name of our physical button, it does nothing on its own as I said. You need either a no draw or an invisible brush. I like using invisible. So I use invisible, but you can use no draw. It will not render when you compile, meaning you will not be able to visibly see it. You will only see the physical button below it. But when you actually try to press it, you will be pressing the invisible button. So let's make this a, a funk button. You can also use a button timed if you want a timed event name the funk button something like fill button so that you know the button does something with fill. You can make the glow entity uh, the let's kill fill. So this will make the thing below it glow. Let's make it so that this does not reset. You do not want to activate the timer more than once because that would be pointless. Now use activates. You can add sparks. 
or you can make it start locked. It doesn't for this tutorial we don't need to do that. Add on pressed fill. Actually fill timer because we're activating the timer. So fill timer enable. So when you press this button, this button could be anything like a survival button, it could be a finale button, an onslaught button. And of course you can add a sound to your button. So using an ambient generic name it something like fill act sound. I just use act and sound as abbreviations because it's easier for me to keep track of. And pick whatever sound you want. I'm going to use this button. Yes, I will use that button. That very loud button. Source entity name is fill uh, no, let's make that the physical. So this will come from the physical button itself. It'll emit this sound, but it won't fire the sound until you hook the button up to it. So on pressed, S and D, because I use the words S and D, letters, not words. Play sound. Let's give, yes. Just like that. So as soon as you press this, it'll enable the timer and play the sound, and then when the timer is enabled, it will spawn a zombie between two and six seconds continuously until you disable it again, which you can disable through whatever means you want. Just fire a disable, point it at it with whatever delay you want. So after 20 seconds, we can disable it. So after 20 seconds, it will disable the timer, which means those will no longer spawn. <laughs> and for this third one, uh, let's say, I'll just come up with something here. Let's make this be a tank. So, so this is a literal example as to how you would spawn a tank. Let's, let's make this button also spawn the tank. So I add on pressed. Uh, what did we name that? We named that something with Georgia in it, so let's go with Georgie. Okay, so Frank Early, James Jr., LeBron, Georgie. That will spawn a zombie. We'll make it after 20 seconds, so the tank will spawn when, this, when Phil stops spawning. So real quick, we need to place a director, because every map needs one of these. I like to name mine director. Valve uses at director whatever reason. Player start. These are also a must for any map. It doesn't matter really. And uh, survivor position. This basically tells the director, okay, here are potential survivor positions. You can force the director to move the survivors to this position whenever you want by targeting your info director, add on gameplay start for this example. When the gameplay starts, it'll, the director will target itself. It'll force the survivor positions to here. And then we can uh, release it after, say, 0.1 seconds. This will ensure that every time the game starts, the survivors will start here 100% of the time. And they will be released. So they won't notice. Now I'm going to save the map something like Zombie Timer Example 2. I was originally going to use the first one, but Bandicam is all stupid and didn't record the sound or whatever. I don't really care what. So now I can run the map just to see what all this did. Always minimize hammer. So when the map starts, you'll get this map as unplayable message. And because we told the director to move the survivors here, he has. So you can see all the survivors are grouped up around here. We have our three empty lanes and our button. As you can see, the button glows because we told it to glow. So if we enter here, we get that zombie to spawn. They will keep spawning so long as we're in this brush. And once we exit, they will stop spawning. Enter, they spawn. Exit, they stop spawning. And the zombies will not pursue you because you do not have a nav mesh currently. Or maybe you do, and they will pursue you, but in my case, I do not have a nav mesh loaded. Okay, so the second test is here. 
this plays the sound. This will keep glowing. And now it's spawning a zombie. This is going by a timer. As you can see, it is spawning at a decent pace, and we do not have to be near it. We do not have to press the button. It will keep spawning until those 20 seconds have elapsed, and it spawns the tank. You can use this for survival if you really want. You could set the timer to something really high, like 300 seconds, and every 300 seconds it would say spawn an additional tank, or more hordes, or a witch. Why you would have a witch in survival, that is up to you. And that concludes this. I hope this helped you in some way.